Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the NBA slate for Monday. We have nine games today. Starting at 7 o'clock, got a pretty clear-cut slate in terms of, and we know a lot of guys are already out, so I'm kind of focusing on a few teams. We got word that the Warriors are going to be resting some other guys today without Klay Thompson, most likely. Draymond is going to sit. Obviously, Steph Curry is still out. So we'll get value from Golden State. We'll get value from OKC. We'll get value from Memphis. Uh, so a lot of good teams, well, not a lot of good teams, a lot of teams shorthanded a bit that we can target. So let's get into it. As always, appreciate it with the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. It was a good day on DraftKings last night, 272 cash. It was a pretty low-scoring night. So let's go ahead and get into it. Looking at the point guard picks today, we have DeJounte Murray. He's 11K. This is a triple-double spot going up against Houston. He's averaging 58 in th three meetings against them this year. Not a surprise coming off of a poor shooting night. You know, besides the game against Portland, he's been struggling with his shot a bit, but still putting up decent fantasy scores. They're nothing great recently, except for that uh, 57 last game and that 65 against OKC. But for the most part, all year, he's been super consistent. He's been one of the most solid superstars to target, and that's why we've seen a huge increase in his price tag from the beginning of the year to now. We have Trey Young at 10-8 going up against the Pacers. It is a good matchup for Trey Young. He continues to play big minutes and produce the Hawks are in that play-in tournament situation, so they're still trying to win some games here, trying to you know, move up as much as they can. Garland is 10-3. I kind of prefer Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, but I don't mind Garland. We've got a lot of value with all these big-name guys out today at the point guard position. we got a ton of value to look at. looks like the Pacers just announced that they're going full-on tank mode. No Brogdon, who's out for rest, even though he hasn't played in like a week and a half. So no Brogdon, probably for the rest of the year. I'm looking at the value from like Tyus Jones. He's $5,800. He looks like a good play. He gives you that double double upside. You know, even without John Moran, they blew out the Bucks. So this team is just ridiculous. They'll probably blow out the Warriors given how good they've been playing. But still like Jones at that $5,800 price tag. Another guy that you can look to is Trey Mann at 58 because he's going to be getting a lot of minutes today. They'll probably have like nine guys on in the rotation uh, with Mann getting a lot of minutes as the point guard. Uh, so he looks good, even though they start Maladon and they kind of run, they can kind of split some time there. Uh, but I do like man. I kind of like Maladon a little bit more. He's been shooting the ball really well recently. Back to back twenty plus point games from him. It gets you some peripheral stats as well. And now that he's getting like thirty two plus minutes, probably will get more today without SGA and Baisley is also out after he played like thirteen minutes against Denver in the most recent game. The matchup is really good for a lot of these OKC pieces. So I like Maladon a lot. And then if you yes, if you want us to keep going further down, you have like uh, Chris Dunn potentially, you have Lance Stevenson, depending on some of the how many active bodies the Pacers have. Last time they just had eight. And then DeSumo looks fine at 43. Moving on to shooting guard, you can go to Halliburton at 92. He's been struggling recently, but without Brogdon the last couple of games, the opportunities are there for him to put up a good game. You know, we're not going to have Klay Thompson today, who's probably going to be resting. So you're going to be looking at Jordan Poole as a great play. Probably he's only point guard eligible. We can plug him in at our utility spot here. Uh, Mid-range-wise, you have Dylan Brooks at 64. Going in the 5K range, we have you know, maybe Derek White, depending on the Boston news. Tatum said he might sit out today. So if he's out, then you're going to be looking. And they're not going to have Robert Williams. They're not going to have Al Horford. So the Celtics are pretty shorthanded. Value-wise, you have Gary Payton as a value pick from the Warriors. You have Aaron Wiggins going to get the start and get a good amount of minutes from the OKC side. And then you're going to be looking at, like, min-priced Moody, who's had a couple of starts this year and he has produced at times. Uh, I'll go ahead and just skip that position for now. Moving on to small forward. Actually, I'll put in Jalen Brown here because I don't think Tatum will play today. The Celtics are now the number one seed, I believe, in the East. They've been on an absolute tear, and it's a spot back-to-back -back for Tatum. If you're dealing with any sort of soreness, you definitely don't want that to linger. So expect him to sit today. That's what he said. If a player says that, assuming he's not going to play, that's going to make Jalen Brown look like one of the best plays on the slate. Other options would be you know, now that RJ or now that RJ Bear looks a little bit worse now that uh, Randall returned last game, even though we didn't get the full minutes out of Randall. Uh, just because the Knicks don't have much to play for anymore. But, you know, knowing Tibbs, he still will probably put them out there. Uh, going with Pokeveski for me at 59, he just looks really good. I always like playing him just because he gives you upside in all categories, assisting, rebounding, scoring, 
get you some defensive stats. He's going to play 35 plus minutes today. Looks like one of the better value picks from the OKC side, Maladon and Pokeveski. A couple of my favorites. You have Roby and Trey Mann as a couple of other pieces. Uh, power forward, you can look to Randall at 94 because he's at home. He's still affordable. And he still is going to get over 30 minutes at least, if not you know, over 40, depending on how much Tibbs wants to push his starters. You know, they don't have much in the 6K range here. I'm not looking at 67 for Johnson or or 66 for Markinen or 62 over Kevin Love. You have some value that we can look to in the 4K range with the Warriors sitting a couple guys. So you're going to be looking at Kaminga at 44. He'll probably will be starting for the team. And at this sort of price tag, he looks pretty good. Moving on to center, you have Jokic at 12-2. Looks great. He should dominate the Charlotte front court. You also have some value here because the Celtics are not going to have their... You know, Williams got hurt, unfortunately. And then their Al Horford is not going to travel. So you're going to have Daniel Tice at 37. Draw the start and probably play north of 25 minutes, if not more. It's just basically him and Luke Cornett. Unless they can run some Grant Williams at center if they wanted to. They might be forced to do some of that. And then the last piece plug in is Jordan Poole because this is a spot for him. Even though he's 81 to put up 25-plus points here, he's taking a ton of shots right now, playing big minutes, and that should continue, especially tonight. You know, 1 of 10 from 3 last night. Good matchup to maybe bounce back. And he's not been great against Memphis, but he's not been playing as many minutes as he is right now, and he has been playing a lot better recently since uh, just with the minutes, averaging almost 38 and a half minutes last five since – there's, he's just going to be the guy that's going to be shooting without Thompson, Curry, just him and Wiggins as the main pieces. So that's about it for the DraftKings side. Let's uh, talk about FanDuel. All right, FanDuel picks at point guard. We got a lot of good ones. Yeah, Murray has only 10K. I like Murray a little bit more than Trey Young, just given how good the matchup it is. Uh, Der definitely you can look to Darius Garland at 93. Lamella Ball coming off of a great game last night, winning against the Brooklyn Nets. It's a back-to-back, -back, but you're still at home here. Should still get good minutes. He's not my favorite, but he's still in play for tournaments. Uh, definitely will go to Jordan Poole at 78. And then Davion Mitchell's priced up a little bit. The matchup is tough. So with some of these other teams being shorthanded today, we've been kind of you know going with a lot of these Kings recently. But today, I like a lot of the other teams more than the Kings. So Trey Mann, 61 looks good. I like Tyus Jones on both sides once again. And then you're going to be looking at you know, Maladon at 49, as well as a guy that's going to play good minutes today. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put in Tyus Jones. I should put in Maladon. 49 for a guy that will start and play probably 32 to 35 minutes. Looks pretty good to me. At shooting guard, go with 78 for Jordan Poole. Still affordable on FanDuel. Going to be getting you all the usage that he can handle today. Other options will be Jalen Brown. I'll plug him in at small forward once you get to that position. But And then you have 62 for Buddy Heald. Looks good. He's still a little bit risky, but you yeah, also have Dylan Brooks at 6000 They priced up. Barton's price has come up a little bit, so he's not as appealing. You still have a good price tag on Levert, but the minutes are just never there for him for some reason. And that's about it, unless you want to go with like Gary Payne and then Moody would probably be. Probably shooting guard eligible. 35 min price. Small forward. Definitely going to be looking at Jalen Brown. If Tatum is not playing today, going up against Toronto, he's going to also benefit without having Horford and you know, Robert Williams just having a more condensed rotation. Dylan Brooks, 6,000. Another guy in the mid-range you can look to Brissett, depending on the news we get, how many guys are active from the Pacers. Wiggins, 58, looks appealing. Also, the other Wiggins from OKC looks good. Probably super cheap as well. At 37. Moving on to power forward. Julius Randle is really affordable at 83, uh, but I'm going to go with Pokiveski on both sides. A little bit more expensive on Fando, and he's only power forward eligible, but and without Baisley, he's going to get all the minutes that he can handle at the four, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays north of 35, and he's a very good point-per-minute guy, so got to go with Pokiveski here. And then pay up for Jokic at 10-9. His price tag is going down on Fando for no reason, and we have so much value at these other spots, so much value at point guard, ton of value at power forward, shooting guard, small forward, just looking at the teams, Golden State, you're going to get a lot of value from. OKC, you're going to get a lot of value from. Boston, you're going to get a lot of value from. So just definitely looking to pay up for Jokic at center. 
And that's about it. You can also go Tice. You can play my two spots, so it's real easy to get to him at 38. And then Grant Williams as well. But that's about it for the video. Thank you for watching. Best of luck tonight. And stay tuned for Twitter for updates. Check out the website if you want to join us for baseball coming up. And I'll see you all next time.